Even on a good day, the communication range of the UHF frequency bands are limited to only a few miles that's using simplex, and that's also with just an open terrain. Even with repeaters, UHF has but a limited footprint. Now, imagine being able to talk across your entire state using UHF and using only an HT, all done with one repeater communing with it, communicating with another in a statewide chain of communication. Now, this is how SARNET, short for Statewide Amateur Radio Network, in Florida accomplishes this communication. I will be discussing SARNET and how it works next on K4SRF Ham Radio. Stick around. So what makes Arnett so successful in communication comes from the use of dedicated bandwidth that is separated from the internet. In fact, Sarnet does not use the internet, landlines, or solar communications in any way to achieve statewide communications. So who actually owns Sarnet? Well, Sarnet is actually a partnership of the Florida Department of Transportation and the amateur radio community. This partnership is beneficial to both the Florida Department of Transportation and the amateur radio community. The Florida Department of uh, Transportation learns how radio technology works, while the amateur radio operators can communicate across the state uh, via this uh, UHF network. So let's take a look at the StarNet website. I'll take you on a brief tour of their site and explain some of the information that they provide. Okay, here we are on the Sarnet website, and I'm not going to go into each page in great detail. I'll let you do that by visiting the site yourself and reading up on Sarnet, the history, and how it operates. But I'm just going to go through each one of these tabs up here just to give you an idea of what's on the website itself. And we're on the home page right now, and this basically tells you what Sarnet is, how it got started whether or not SARNET's for just emergency communications alone or if it's open to the uh, public if you're a licensed TAM operator that is of course and also got, you've got some or uh, have some audio clips here that you can listen to as far as uh, SARNET operations during uh, Hurricane Michael and um, this is also about one of the weekly nets here on SARNET uh, some other information whether you can add your repeater or not and some other notes here uh, also, if you follow this discussion here, it gives you an, uh, information as far as the governmental usage for the 440 uh, megahertz frequency band. Uh, going to the announcements, gives you some announcements whether about SARNET, whether you can link other forms of communication with, uh, with SARNET, and they don't like that. They don't want you to do that. And also, SARNET is weather service. It's not a weather service, even though there are broadcasters that will broadcast important weather information if they have severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, tornadoes sighted, and information like that for their area of the state of Florida. Also, Eric from Ham Radio Concepts has done a video on Sarnet itself, and if you follow that link here, that'll take you to his uh, his presentation of the Sarnet network itself. Going to how it works here. Tells you about the microwave uh, communications uh, between all the repeaters, uh, how to use it, some other general information. Gives you some presentations about the 2015, 17, 19 uh, uh, Hamacon, or Ham, if I can say it, Ham, Ham, Hamcation, that is, presentation. Uh, easier said than, uh, easy, it's not that easy to say that sometimes. Anyway, uh, it also tells you in detail how the Florida Department of Transportation works with the SARNET network here. Scrolling down some more, it gives you some diagrams of the uh, FDOT microwave links and how they communicate with uh, vehicles and uh, base stations itself. That's some interesting reading here. Going to the system maps. Now the system maps if you'll click here, this is the amateur frequency assignment map. Clicking that brings you up this page here, up to this page. If it loads, there we go. And let's see if I can increase the size a little bit here. Okay, uh, all of these are towers or repeaters here. 
the ones in green are the active towers. The ones in black, Pensacola, where I'm at, are Chiefland, Daytona. These are all proposed or in the works. Uh, they're not active at this moment. And actually, these all these repeaters can communicate with each other. So if I... I'm in Pensacola, but the Pensacola repeater is not active, so I have to use the Milton repeater in, Sa uh, in Santa Rosa. So I can connect to the Santa Rosa repeater. It's just a county right to the east of me here. And I can do this with my either mobile, uh, HT, or base station. Uh, I've been able to use my HT with no problem. And I can connect with the Milton repeater. When I connect with that Milton repeater, it goes down to the hub down here. And when it hits the hub, it triggers every one of these repeaters. So if I key the repeater in Milton, it's actually going to key every single repeater you see here in green. Uh, that's why it's important to, if you key the repeater and you're having a conversation with somebody, give it an extra couple of seconds so all these repeaters can uh, either reset themselves and you don't, they don't miss out on part of your conversation. They don't get par partial words. They get the full conversation. So you need to give it an extra second, a couple of seconds, so all these repeaters can uh, reset themselves in between uh, uh, when they're triggered. Now, over here on the uh, right-hand side, you have all the towns that have active repeaters in green. Again, the ones in black are either proposed or under construction. Some of the proposed uh, repeaters, like Daytona and Dundee, already have uh, uh, frequencies assigned to them and Estero for instance is determined that's not does not have a, uh, a a frequency assigned to it yet and Pensacola where I'm at's already got an assignment and I know that's a uh, Pensacola Naval Air Station uh, Hospital I believe and it's got the tones as well what tones so if you want to find a repeater that's close to your location and put it into your uh, radio with the frequency and the sign tone you have connection then to the Sarnet network here okay moving right along let's go down to the coverage map if you click here and on this map let's go ahead and see if I can enlarge it as well a little bit <clears throat> all the circles in green are the coverage for that particular repeater again green being active repeaters, black being under construction or uh, to be determined it's not quite up and running yet. They're inactive. They're inactive for your repeaters. Again, I'm in Escambia County if, and ours is inactive. It's still under construction and proposed. So I'm picking up on the uh, Milton repeater in Santa Rosa and that is this one right here. And as you can see, it pretty much covers all of Escambia County where I'm at and goes into more than half of Okaloosa County. And Okaloosa covers its own self, plus most of uh, Santa Rosa and into Walton County. So, well, like I said, when I key a repeater, Milton repeater in this case, it goes throughout the whole state. And this red line is the interstate. That's Interstate 10. Uh, this right here is Interstate 75. This is Interstate 95. I believe that's Interstate 4 right here. Uh, that's a continuation of uh, Interstate 75 here, and that's 95 all the way down. All right. Let's go to System Status. System Status page basically gives you the status of all the particular repeaters, uh, whether the uh, repeater is operational, uh, whether it's offline, uh, if it's in planning stage, and that's the date it went into planning stage, uh, should be uh, Daytona should be operational in 2019, late 2019. It's not operational yet, so there's something holding that up. But this basically just gives you a status report of all of the repeaters, uh, 33, I believe they are, in the state of uh, Florida for Sarnet. On your facts page here, just some uh, information about when you key up are you talking all over the state uh like i said if you can give it a couple extra seconds uh here when i key up my radio how long should i wait to talk uh just just some information about communicating on the sarnet network here 
next tab is contact us and that is a form you can fill out if you have questions it'll be sent to the appropriate people I've sent I've sent them a couple of requests and have always had a response back from them uh, not immediate usually takes about 24 to 48 hours sometimes 72 hours but I don't remember ever any communications not being answered within 48 hours so I'm saying 72 hours because of holidays weekends or whatever uh, on the more if you click the more it's a hurricane help from the FCC you click that and it basically gives you some information about how the FCC helps the uh, county emergency operations centers if a hurricane is approaching it gives you some important information about what goes on when there is a upcoming event that uh, needs to be addressed for the state of Florida well that's basically it that's the Sarnet network website and you can find it at sarnetfl.com I'll put a link in the video itself uh, you know it's it's wealth of information and it's uh kind of interesting to see how this nation or the statewide that is statewide network works where uh, it's not reliant on cell phone communication landlines or even the internet so there you have it this is how SARN is operated and how it is able to communicate statewide during periods of emergency SARNet can provide communications through their linked repeaters where other forms of communication fail. I hope you've enjoyed this video and want to remind you that if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified of any new videos that are posted. Until later, 73 for now. This is Steve, K4SRF.